Parkways Online Worship. My name is Pastor Pam Stolheim Lane, and I am glad that you are joining me and our worship team for worship. For our worship today, most of the words will be shown on the screen and a bulletin is available on the website as well. In addition to our online worship, we also offer both parking lot radio worship and sanctuary worship on Sundays at 9.30 a.m. Our policy is to ask those who are not yet vaccinated to wear a mask inside the church. However, I'm encouraging everyone to mask inside the church because of the increased spread of the Delta variant and the increased risk for children who cannot yet get vaccinated. Masks are not fun to wear, but they help us to worship safely together. Now, on a much happier note, footage of our own Mary O'Neill's 100th birthday party will be on CARE 11 on Monday, August 23rd at 10 p.m., so be sure to watch it. Welcome to worship. Let us begin with song.
ardent life. You call us to the banquet of your love. We find you in the gifts you give. We know you in the ones with whom we share this holy food. And in the bread of this table, your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that we may be bread for others as Jesus is bread for us. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua, the 24th chapter. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sechem, and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Now therefore, revere, revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods, for it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Word of life, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Because of this, many of his disciples 
turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Times were tough. There was very little health care, and what they had was mostly quackery. No insurance. Taxes were exorbitant. But then along comes Jesus, a rabbi who not only heals the sick and makes the blind to see, but also feeds the hungry with an abundance of food. There were even leftovers. Of course people flocked to him. Lots of people wanted to be his disciples. But when Jesus started teaching about who he is, and invited them to eat his flesh and blood and to abide in him and letting him abide in them, well, these images were, frankly, tough to swallow. They complained, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? And many people left. Following Jesus was not easy then, and it isn't always easy now. We have been living in a tough time. The coronavirus has killed over three million people and sickened far more. And now the pandemic statistics seem to be ramping up again with the Delta virus. I am weary of it. But worse yet, instead of coming together on this, our country and our world is divided about this and lots of other things. It is easy to wonder, where is God in all of this? Has God forgotten about us? Some people may think so and have given up on God, or at least given up on church. When things got tough and some followers started to leave, Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? But Peter responded, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The disciples had come to a crossroad. Do they abandon Jesus and their faith in him, or do they follow, even though they don't know what lies ahead? The people of Israel were at a similar crossroad before they crossed the Jordan River into the Holy Land. They knew what lay behind them. They did not know what lay ahead. Joshua asked them to choose. Are they with him, or were they going a different way? He told them his choice. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people agreed. Even though they did not know what lay ahead, they would trust in God. There are times in our life when we are challenged. Sometimes our faith is challenged, especially when the bottom falls out of the life that we knew or thought we knew. A loved one dies unexpectedly, a fire or a flood takes away our savings, a pandemic disrupts our life and the life of the whole world. And just when we thought we were over this, the coronavirus is back in a new variation. It seems like at times like this that we as the people of God need one another and that we need to support one another, even if we don't always agree on everything. As a community of Christ, we are like a braided rope. Each one supports the other, and the Holy Spirit supports us all. As it says in Ecclesiastes, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. In challenging times, we need one another 
to help each other hold on to and trust in the promises of God and to simply move forward in faith. And sometimes we have experiences that help put all of this into perspective. This summer I took a backpacking trip to the Bob Marshall Wilderness. I had been there before and an old knee injury had acted up and so one of my teammates ended up carrying my pack for the last mile one day because I just couldn't carry it any further. This time there were only two of us going. So we packed smarter and lighter and trained harder and even practiced spraying an old can of bear spray. So when it was time to go, I felt much better prepared. But you can't prepare for everything. One day our goal was to reach an alpine lake, Lake Laval. We knew it would be a stretch, so we had a backup goal that was closer. And according to our map, there was just a little pond at the foot of the north wall, a great mountain range that's part of the Rocky Mountains. As I walked, I imagined this alpine pond glistening in the woods just a little farther on. But while the distance measured as a crow flies was only a few clicks away, click is a backpacker's term for a kilometer, this did not take into account any switchbacks, going back and forth and up and then down and then back up the mountainside. Nor did it account for the intense heat of the middle of the day. Finally, we reached our destination, the short-term destination, but the pond had dried up. There was only a trickle of water and no place to camp. We filled up our water bottles and disappointed trudged on. But I found myself walking slower and slower. And finally, as I started to trip over my own feet, I realized I just had to sit down. So we rested for a time. And when we looked up, we saw three trees that would be the perfect spot to hang our hammock tent. It wasn't the place we were looking for, but that mountainside became our refuge that night, a place to rest and to rejuvenate. And as I looked around at the mountains around me, I felt very small, but not alone. I was struck by the grandeur of the mountains, and like Peter, I stopped trusting in my own strength. With the psalmist I prayed, I looked to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Again, there's something about wilderness that puts life into perspective. This year's mission trip wasn't the one that they had planned last summer to New York City. That trip, like so many other things, was canceled because of the pandemic. So instead, they went to Wilderness Canoe Base. Like Peter, they had some things to wrestle with, and like Peter, they learned some things about themselves and about God. What happens when you put a bunch of great youth in canoes in the boundary waters with wonderful leaders and good guides trained in both leading Bible studies and in leading canoe trips? Well, amazing things. God's creation inspires wonder and awe, even when there are hard and challenging experiences along the way. And when you invite the Holy Spirit into the conversation, it's hard to say what will happen, but it will be good.
us a scream. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the Spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Jesus, you are the peace in our troubled sea. You are the lighthouse for us to see. You are the bread of life and the words of eternal life. You come to us in both extraordinary and ordinary ways. Open our eyes to see you, Lord, and to share your love and grace with the world around us. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. God of comfort, bring healing to the afflicted. Be with our medical professionals as they continue to care for those who have COVID-19. Help people all over the globe to work together to rid the world of the devastating effects of the pandemic. Rest your healing hand upon all who are hurting and in need of care. We remember Ramona Anderson, Donna Benson, Craig Blackman, Jane Bork, Carol Brown, Jacqueline Bukowski, Bob Fernelius, Larry Gear, Brad Hesland, Carolyn Logason, Joyce Merkel, Margaret Penzimus, Herb Schelk, Linda St. John, Lucas Wisty, and Vic Wolger, and all those who we name with our lips and in our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. God of compassion, bless all who are in any need, be especially with the people of Afghanistan, Provide safe passage out of Afghanistan for those who are in danger and bring peace and justice to the people of that nation. Also, provide needed aid and supplies to those in Haiti as they rebuild and recover from another devastating earthquake. Accompany all those in the world who are persecuted and oppressed and open us to their cries. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. God of creation, bless fields and orchards, protect the land from drought, and bring life-giving rain to support growth. Be with those fighting the raging wildfires and bring relief to those all over the world who have suffered loss as a result of the fires. Instruct your people in wise treatment of the world you have provided for all your creatures. Come, Holy Spirit, hear our prayer receive these prayers O god and those in our hearts known only to you through jesus christ our lord amen we worship god by supporting our church and the mission we share our mission for the month of august is near food shelf specifically to provide school supplies and monetary donations for children in need as they head back to school. You can either give online, mail in your offering, or come by church and drop it in the um, offering basket. 
Let's pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Please receive these gifts. May us love us in your world. Amen. Let us pray. I lost my mic. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace.